Hi everyone, welcome to today's session where we're going to learn about how we can use the JavaScript, uh, build a JavaScript front end application and connect that with the .NET Aspire dashboard so we can get end to end tracings and telemetries and things like that. The kind of stuff that we love about the .NET Aspire dashboard, but doing that across a couple of different run types. My name is Aaron Powell. I'm a principal cloud advocate here at Microsoft on the .NET on Azure advocacy team. And I hope at the end of this session, you'll feel more confident in trying to build applications that are going to span multiple different languages and get that rich sort of telemetry and insights that we can get with the .NET Aspire dashboard. From a slides perspective, well, pretty much done here. Um, because I really just want to get in and show you how we can build this. So with that in mind, let's jump over to my VS Code instance and have a look at the kind of application we can build. So I've got an application here. It's already got the uh, .NET Aspire uh, app host configured. I have a .NET API that's going to expose a couple of HTTP endpoints that we're going to consume. We have our app host configured where we have our services and all those sorts of things set up. But instead of having a front end that's written in, say, Blazor and running as an ASP.NET web application, I'm running this as a React application using uh, Beat. And I've started that using the add npm app um, for, uh, for .NET Aspire so that the app host will start that up. Now here in Bookstore Web, well, I'll find a pretty standard Beat application. Now I have uh, I have my package JSON. It's in TypeScript, so I have you know, some type safety and you know, all those sorts of things uh, that we were expecting there. But this is just a it's a front end application, I ideally deployed as say a static web app that I could have on Azure Static Web Apps. I could have it inside of a container app with um, something in front of it, or or whatever the hosting model you want to tackle with uh, would be. Here's the application. Uh, we'll see that I have um, you know, my my home page. I can then expand this out, and I can get a whole bunch of um, books back from the the database that I have behind the scenes. Now uh, there's been seeded with data data in there. I can create new books, and as I click around, if we come over to the Spire dashboard and look at traces, well, we'll see that we're starting to get some trace information here. I'm seeing a call to API slash books, and that's going to return me all the books. And well, I can see that that then hit my um, my SQL database. All those sorts of things that you know, I kind of want from um, an Aspire set of telemetry and, and what I can see in the the, um, the dashboard and that good rich logging and tracing and all that kind of stuff. But I'm I'm losing part of the boundary. I can only see the .NET component of this. I know that API slash books was called, but who was the caller? What was the things that happened that led up to that? And we're kind of losing that. Whereas inside of a Blazor application, well, we'd probably get some of that telemetry as well because I can see that kind of end-to-end -end clicking uh, around and, and whatnot because it's all within inside of a .NET context. But we're not in .NET for our front end, so how do we tackle that uh, then? Well, this is where we can use the power of open telemetry because it has got um, SDKs for well, pretty much every uh, language that we're going to need. In this case, obviously JavaScript. Now, I've done some setup initially just to get the ball rolling here. I've gone through and I've installed um, the various NPM packages I need. So things like the open telemetry API, the tracing web, uh, because this is running with inside of the browser. There's a different set of things if you're going to use it with Node.js and do it entirely on the server. Um, uh, and some of these things like zones we'll talk about in a moment. I've also set up to use the OTLP uh, tracer, and then this is going to use a HTTP tracer so that it sends that over uh, the HTTP requests to my Aspire dashboard. Uh, if we come back into Aspire, uh, Aspire dashboard, and I have a look at my web resource, the details here, pop this to the side, we can see that it is passing in all the uh, the endpoint information, such as where my endpoint is. Uh, and this one I've configured, to, uh, it's running on um, uh, localhost uh, 21161. And I've also reconfigured this to use HTTP instead of gRPC as the protocol because I need to be able to make requests from the browser. Now to do that, we need to make sure that we configure the Aspire dashboard oops, uh, to launch with uh, with HTTP as the protocol. Uh, and we do that with inside of our, uh, our, our post on the launch settings. I'm setting a HTTP uh, endpoint URL for the dashboard uh, so that it did knows to start that with um, HTTP requests and it can um, 
uh, and we can do the open telemetry tracing into that. Okay, so now that the environment's ready to go, let's start putting some stuff in to make this work. I've created uh, a new file called instrumentation.ts where I've gone ahead and kind of set up the basics of uh, what I'm going to need to instrument telemetry. And I'm only going to worry about tracing, not metrics. So the scope of this, we just kind of don't have enough time to cover every aspect. Um, but I have this initialized telemetry function. I'm going to take the endpoint URL and I take any headers, such as you know, the authentication headers that I'm going to need to talk to uh, my uh, open telemetry endpoint within inside of the .NET Aspire dashboard, and any other attributes that I might want to attach to that um, as it gets started. Inside of the main.tsx file, I'm going to initialize the telemetry using the environment variables that uh, were provided from the Aspire app post when it started up. Things like our endpoint, headers, and attributes. Obviously, you pass in any additional ones that you want there. Uh, another one that I've got here, just to show that you can access them with inside of this file if you wanted to instead, I'm using the service name. So that's how it knows that the name of the service as was defined in our app host file. Um, and we, we log that out so that we uh, we have our tracings connected appropriately. So I'm going to set up um, some attributes that are going to be needed here. And then we're using a web tracing provider from OpenTelemetry. So this is how um, we're indicating that this is uh, capturing traces within inside of a browser context and that we can then send those somewhere. I then have a, I have to um, set a span processor. So the thing that is going to capture those traces uh, and, and make sure that they get processed and, and output to a location. So I'm just using a simple span processor. So this is going to do every single one. You can do batch processing if you prefer. And then this is just going to put it to uh, the JavaScript browser console. So I'm using a console span export. And then set a, uh, then configuring a context manager. So the context manager I'm using is zone context manager, which is going to create an artificial, essentially an, an async boundary around the, um, the events that are happening with inside of my OTLB um, environment. So that we get those, um, so that we can can connect things together appropriately. Uh, this is uh, this is just more of a nuance within inside of JavaScript because of how um, JavaScript uh, deals with asynchronous processing. Uh, I don't have any instrumentation instrumentation set up just yet. We'll we'll do that in a moment. But uh, so with all that kind of set up, uh, our browser should have reloaded. And if we pop open the dev tools to the side, let's just resize that a little bit. Well, we won't see anything just yet because, well, while I've got it set up, I'm not telling it to try and capture anything. So we need to capture some information. And for that, I'm going to have to add some instrumentation. So what do I want to know about when uh, when requests are happening? Well, there's a, a lot of different ways we can instrument. I kind of that built-in instrumentation. Like we get when we use the .NET Aspire um, uh, integrations, how it automatically instrumenta does instrumentation like down to SQL groups. Well, I can do a similar thing in JavaScript. I'm going to use, say, a document load instrumentation. And I'm going to import that from a NPM package called the, unsurprising, instrumentation document load. We'll add that in. We'll save that. And then if we jump back to our browser, we'll say, boom, I've actually had a whole bunch of stuff dumped in my console. We expand out some of these. We can see, well, this is some of the um, the things that have happened. We've done like a resource fetch, and it's tried to get a. Uh, it's got a particular resource. Uh, we have a look at some of the attributes. We can see that that was the uh, Open Telemetry SDK JavaScript file. So you know, these are the resources that were fetched by the browser to load the page. We can have a look. There's a whole bunch that have happened there. But if we come into the Aspire dashboard, we'll see that well, still we're not getting anything in here. I have my, my HTTP request for my API service, but I'm not not seeing anything. Uh, and that's because my instrumentation, sorry, my my um, exporter is only going to the console. But if we were to add, say, a provider, uh, and instead of using a console exporter, we'll use the open telemetry trace exporter and then provide it with these open telemetry options that I've defined up here. So that's the endpoint and custom headers. Now, if I hit save, We'll come back to our browser and reload this page. We'll see that we still have everything that appears there. But now, look at that. We have a new entry within the side of the .edifier dashboard, which is our web traces. If I click on this, and we'll see document fetch. 
can have a look at that and we'll see that it's tried to get the uh, client. We've seen that we've got the main TSX. We'll see all the other NPM packages and JavaScript files that we were expecting. They've all been captured. So now we're tracing what's happening with inside of our browser, seeing those files. Now this obviously you get by chatting. So maybe you want to conditionally include this one or have ways that you can enable or disable that kind of tracing, but it's there. Like we're, we're starting to pump information from our JavaScript client to our server. But well, I'm doing a HTTP request here. I'm, I'm using using the fetch API and I want to get back the, um, uh, this gave back the list of books, but how do I do that in a way that I can actually then connect that to the, the request that's happening on the, the server? Well, for this, I need to add another bit of instrumentation. And uh, this, I'm going to use the fetch instrumentation. Just add in more. With the fetch instrumentation, I need to tell it that, well, I'm doing this with inside of a, uh, I, this is doing a, a clause request, so it's going across origins. Uh, so I need to make sure that uh, I am grabbing, uh, I'm telling it to, to actually capture those things across. So I'm just going to copy from my sample code rather than having you uh, watch me write out a regex. Uh, so what we're going to say, I want to prop propagate trace headers uh, to any cause URLs that are happening. Uh, and anything that is just an API uh, request within my environment, we're going to capture that uh, and, and connect that together. Now, let's go back to our browser. We'll reload this page. And if we come back to our traces, ta-da! Now we see the API service, instead of it just being an isolated one like we were initially having or in disconnected from the web request, we can see that habit here. A web HTTP request happened. It was calling API books, which resulted in the call to API books in .NET, which then re resulted in a call into the SQL client to return data from our SQL server. Awesome. But what I wanted to go a step further and add some like details about where that went inside of my environment. Well, let's come into the books.ts file. So this is my little API wrapper. And let's go to this fetch books uh, method here. Um, and instead of just direct returning the, the API call, I can then wrap this inside of a tracing call. So I could return a trace from the open telemetry um, API with inside of um, uh, well, uh, with inside my NPM packages. And then I'm going to get a tracer and get a tracer. I'm going to call this book web store. And look, we'll, we'll let um, Copilot uh, do some completions for me. And then we'll just close off some of these parentheses, save that, and uh, we'll have a look at, sorry, that should be start active span, not start span. So we're going to start the active span. So we're going to get a tracer. So this is um, indicating uh, that this is a series of, of connected events. We're then going to get an active span. So this is um, the thing that we're actually going to appear, it's actually going to appear with inside of the, the Aspire dashboard when we look at it. And then this callback gives us a span object where we can add additional information, or at the very least, we need to call span dot end so we tell it when that environment has uh, that 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 trace has ended, uh, and we will uh, stop connecting them together. So now let's come back here, reload our browser, come into our traces, and now we have two from the web. Fetch books, which resulted a HTTP call, which called the API, which called the SQL database. We can even go up one more level uh, to where, like, because I don't know where this API is being called. Well, I mean, I do because I wrote the application, <laughs> but I have no kind of insights from my tracing. So again, we could go return trace from here, and then we'll do just call a bunch of stuff like that, and then let's close off our uh, parentheses, bracket, there we go. So now we can wrap that again in uh, another one. And again, we're going to do uh, a span.end. And I'll also do a span.end up here, span.end up here. So in case that, in case we have an error, error span.end will report that. Um, and I need to put one more in this place, but I can also add additional information. So we could say, I want to do span.add an event, I want to say fetching book, book ID. Let's save that. Come back over to the browser. We will uh, reload the page. 
Oops. Did I put that in book or did I put that in books? I think I put that in an individual book. That's all right. We can click through to an individual book. We'll see here, right down the bottom, the book loader got called. Uh, and then we can have a look at the information with inside of this. So book loader, uh, and then inside of our events, look at that. We've added additional information into that. So now we can see from where we've started with inside of our you know, component in React that is actually calling something. It is then calling across to like an API service we've got with inside or an API file we've got with inside of our JavaScript application, which is then making a HTTP request to a .NET application, which is then calling a SQL database. And we can see that kind of end-to-end -end telemetry tracing. And that pretty much brings us to the end of time for today. I'm going to jump back over to my slides because we are done. Um, I hope that's been useful and informative. If you want to reach out to me, get in contact, ask me any questions about this session, I mean, obviously um, drop comments in uh, in the, the stuff below the video or reach out to me on my various social media platforms. Uh, but like I said, that's all we had time for today. Thanks for joining us uh, at the event or watching the recording on demand if that's where you're consuming this for. And I look forward to seeing what kind of applications you build with the .NET Aspire dashboard, especially if we're looking at doing it cross-batteries, JavaScript to .NET or any other language in between. See you next time.